Man, something spiritually I feel is really going on. I couldn't describe how I feel. It's not depression, it's not anxiety, I'm not sad, anything. It's just really, you know, I was sharing my dreams, but y'all think I'm even more crazy. But I noticed, like, when it's raining out or gloomy out, my mood is real down. I'm sleepy, I'm just real lethargic. I don't really want to do shit. But, um... Yeah, I'm uh, one with the universe. I sense the sense of palities. The sense the cut 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 cut. The sense the cut 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 cut. I can't even talk long with my mouth. Good morning, bitch. I am no doctor, well, medically, and I'm not giving anyone any medical advice. Just a suggestion that if you suffer from any type of mental angst, whether that's depression, uh, PTSD, bipolar, uh, anxiety, whatever you may have going on, if you drink anything with sugar alcohols or sugar substitutes, if Anything you drink has caffeine, even if it's tea. If you suffer from eczema, my suggestion would be to detox your body of those symptoms. I mean, sugar alcohols, sugar, sugar substitutes, and caffeine all together. <sighs> I wanna say stevia, but then again, I don't know. I'm just gonna use it all and cut them all out. Recently, I was drinking these um, buys, so I thought they had antioxidants in them, and I did the classic mistake I did not fully read my label and I'm trying to think back to several years ago um, when I was drinking more water and I was using stevia to sweeten the water that had flavor in it may try it again may not but for now i'm just going to remove stevia from my list as well and these buys i noticed that they had caffeine and um erythol probably saying it incorrectly so nonetheless um in high school one of my um long time Someone I knew since like kindergarten. Um, I love the Trident uh, Tropical Twist Gum. I used to chew the hell out of that gum. Like it was my favorite gum. And unless you have this, you it's really hard to describe it. It's almost like um uh, um creepy crawly feeling it's slightly different than an, an itch um it, they come out of nowhere they they can occur from your head to your toe and your scalp everybody in various places and you don't really know what it is that's causing it 
for me, like if I go outside and I feel like, you know, a bug touched my skin or, or anything, I'll get that creepy crawly feeling. I have to shower. If um, I have caffeine in my system, at least this is what I'm now deducing from my own experience. So what happened is a few weeks ago, I was exercising, was so overheated and passed out, drunk some by, and because I like them, I at least so I thought, and I had been drinking them seldomly um, over the course of a few months, but not, okay, slow down. So I would buy a few here or there and drink them seldomly to replace the juice for the day, whatever, not really realizing that it had caffeine in it. Now keep in mind, I've been having these weird insomnia, anxiety, uh, stress issues going on for several months, like weirdness, but not connecting the two. And then recently, I Again, not knowing, I love the flavors. I bought so many of them um, from Amazon, like almost a hundred dollars worth, and finally realized what the culprit was. I didn't read the label, and the listing did not indicate that it had caffeine in it. So I took the picture. Um, my other phone's on the on my nightstand, so I can't verbally say if the math is, but I did the math, breaking down how much exactly is in there. That's another thing. Growing up, you think, oh, they're selling me a bag of 99 cent chips. This must be, a, you know, one serving, but you read the label, it's not. Most foods are not packaged in their one serving size. So you got to do the math to see exactly how much you're really eating when you eat these items so it's 18 ounces in these in, in drinks so I did the math and I want to say it's 11.2 something and I don't I don't know it's I did the math the other day so I'll just use that to to the video so you see the numbers um, so Another thing also, I had severe allergies growing up in eczema, so I would take a um, Zyrtec daily for over 10 years, you know, and 20, I should have wrote this date down, 2012, 2013, around that time maybe, I'll never forget, I was in my whole detox you know i'm gonna change my body i'm sick of all these goddamn ingredients so for about two years i made my own toothpaste i made my own deodorant i made my own everything basically soap all that stuff and one day i woke up and said i've had enough i am sick of taking a pill every fucking day and so i started doing my research and it was around this time that when I took myself off of the third tech. Oh, and the whole creepy crawly feeling. The other times it occurred in my life, I you know, I I equated it to oh I stayed up late the other day, now my body's running on adrenaline, I'm sleepy or you know, a bug touched me, my skin's reacting, or whatever, you know, I always attributed things to stress or my eczema. And those are definite triggers. But not realizing it could be the caffeine. And so again, do reading several forums and other people's experiences, I concluded that, you know, for a lot of people, you can't drink these sugar alcohols and caffeine because it has adverse effects on your skin. And so many other people were saying they had the same type of creepy crawly feeling um, after they drunk the erythrol or the exitol or the stevia or the caffeine. So 
that's you know a fair assessment and so I, I, I took off I stopped taking the Zyrtec cold turkey boom oh my god and the way my allergies were set up if I missed a day the next day was hell I literally would wake up with red eyes I'm sneezing, I'm irritable, watery eyes, just my childhood was horrible when my ex, I mean my well, eczema and my allergies were acting up. So, I googled Zyrtex Detox. Again, thousands of other people were having the same withdrawal effects. Histamine was all out of whack. That y'all, it is. I mean, I would. I was hitting my foot. I was pinching my. I mean, the itch is so unbearable. It's an internal itch you cannot describe, y'all. Oh my God! I don't wish that on nobody. So then, um, going through the process of winding myself off of the Zyrtec every day, I started doing the neti pot every day. And that helped. And then, um, I was drinking uh, apple cider vinegar heavy, not realizing that was could be a problem as well too, because I was drinking that every day. Cause I liked the taste of it. I was putting it in my juice. I was taking a shot of it, not realizing it can erode your teeth and all that other shit. But that's another video. Anyways, I um, was doing things to supplement and not taking the allergy pill. And those first few days were hard. But then my symptoms started to go away. The neti pot really worked with sinuses. And stress, you know, eczema, stress, stress is a trigger. Sunlight is a trigger for me. Um, heat, exhaustion, all those things can trigger my eczema or certain chemicals. But... Everyone's different. Learn your body. So, I knew from working in the pharmacy that I was never going to take the Zyrtec again. And I remember, I remember how many days afterwards I took a loratadine pill to kind of soothe the symptoms. And then I took another double dose of that. And then I said, fuck it, I'm just going to wink it. I'm not taking no more allergy pills. Um, long story short, I made it off the allergy. So my thing was doing the neti pop once a day, and that was that. I might have did that for a few months, not really sure how long, but that was my daily go-to. Like, okay, I gotta do this so I don't have the symptoms. Boom. It's 2018. It's probably been over six years now, five, six years or so, since I've taken an allergy pill. Mind you, my entire life up until like, well, shit, early 20s when I stopped doing it, um, I had severe allergies year round. Like, literally, I couldn't see, sneeze, all that shit. I had to take the Zyrtec or the over the counter Walmart brand. But, anyways. I, um, so now, okay, so boom, all that happened, boom, so looking back, not realizing, now I'm sure there's something else spiritually going on that was causing me to have these sleep issues, you know, working for yourself or working from home, I realized I wasn't getting as much physical activity that I used to get, I love walking, and I would walk several days a week on schedule. And these past maybe six months or so, I just really haven't been walking or doing things like I used to. So if I work from home, I literally don't really have anywhere really to go. I'm already a homebody. So the only movement my legs were getting were when I had to go to the store or you know walking around my home 
but definitely a drastic decrease. And so I was, I researched what restless, restless leg syndrome was. And I was having like, whether I stopped drinking early in the day, late at night. Um, again, mind you, y'all, I'm drinking those buys here and there, not realizing that it's fucking my shit up. And so I was having the frequent urge to urinate at night. I'm like, why? Like, what the fuck? Like several times, y'all. Like, um, I enter REM pretty fast. I dream all the time. But the urge to urinate was so annoying. Like, I couldn't get to sleep. Uh, I'm thinking I'm stressed. I'm thinking I'm, you know, what am, what's wrong? I'm thinking I got a, a track infection. Tested for that. Nothing. Um, just all type of shit. And so, finally read the bottles and, you know, did some backward thinking and realized, okay, maybe it's the wheat. Because this is one bread I use. It's frozen. But I'm about to go start driving to Whole Foods again and getting this other bread that doesn't have wheat in it. But, nonetheless, that's my next thing to take out my diet completely. But, I read that they had caffeine in it. And they try to get you, oh, it's just green tea. No, bitch, it's caffeine. So, their sugar alcohols and the caffeine were in those buys. Not realizing I have a, I can't do that in my body. Or it has these effects. And so, for six months or so, I've been drinking those buys. Thinking, oh, it's antioxidant. I'll drink just a couple times a week. And, oh, I'm doing good. No, bitch, not for me. Um, so yeah, it takes about two weeks or more for caffeine to fully get out your system, for the sugar alcohol effects to fully get out your system. Your body doesn't really break them down or process them. And needless to say, the last three nights I've been able to fully, I've noticed an improvement in my sleep. And I have a pillow that I put at the bottom of my feet to kind of help prop them up. I've been stretching and I've been walking again. The, my legs are propped up. There's this weird sensation that I have now in my bed that has allowed me to wake up feeling rested again. Um, there's been a decrease in the urge to get up and use the bathroom. And it could be gallstones or hernia or, yeah, the gallstones or hernia. You know, stress related, all that stuff. I started taking a pumpkin seed supplement. I already do a B12 complex. And I was also doing the zinc daily but I also recently read that that could be damaging and potentially lead to some type of cancer and so all these things going on you know trying to be healthy you might be overloading your system with too much stuff so I was doing the zinc daily century I think that's 30 milligrams the b12 complex I was doing those once a day not realizing I could be putting too much zinc in my body um, on top of the caffeine and sugar alcohols. But today's probably the third day that I've woken up on this Sunday actually feeling like I rested or I was sleepy again. Because I really wasn't feeling sleepy. Again, not realizing that the caffeine and those sugar alcohols were fucking with my rhythm, my circadian rhythm. And I'm other other things going on, but health-wise... Food-wise, those were definitely things that needed to be taken out of my diet. Um, so I added an electrolyte pill. Even though it says take six for one serving, that's a lot of horse pills. I can do one. So I do that. A B12 complex. Uh, a pumpkin seed. 
six days a week in the morning with breakfast. And I'm going to do the zinc on Sundays today, once a day. I mean, once a week. Since it's so much in one pill, I to get our red day if you take it daily for too much or however much it can cause cancer. So I do like what zinc does, and I don't eat a lot of meat. So I will do it once a week, just kind of balance it. And I know that pumpkin seeds uh, oil have some zinc in it, but I think it's 0.764 milligrams per gram per thousand grams. So it's very microscopic, but I'm still going to keep the zinc in my diet and see how my body reacts to just using it once a week versus every day or six days a week I was with the other ones but mainly this was mainly about the sugar alcohols the sugar substitutes and the caffeine if you have any of those ailments that I described earlier you may want to remove those items from your diet and then wait three weeks and see if you feel a change in your sleep but also when you work for yourself or you work from home and you have a hectic schedule, it's hard to have um, a routine. And I've been doing, I've noticed for the last seven years, doing my own thing, not reporting to school in high school, not reporting to college every day. Your body can get out of whack because now you really don't have a five day schedule that you are supporting. And so it is hard to force yourself to go to bed at night or I'm a night owl, I like being up at night. So it's hard to go to bed at night if I don't have anything to do or what I have to do involves me working, getting up and walking to my office and I have to go anywhere. So I'm working on getting my sleep in some type of routine, getting back walking, my legs sake, and removing caffeine and all those sugar alcohols from my system. I don't have the creepy crawly feeling anymore. I woke up feeling rested. I'm sleeping and the pillows helping my legs. I'm gonna start stretching again and walking and, and moving my body because I don't really get to do much at home. That's all y'all, read your labels.